Good morning, everybody. My name is Maurice Button. I'm the CEO at City and Financial Global, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to the latest in our series of speaker interviews. Uh, today, we have joining us Matt Townsend, who's the partner and global head of the International Trade and Regulatory Law Group at Alan Lowbury. And Matt's going to be speaking at our Economic Sanctions Summit, which is being held in London on the 29th of January. Uh, Matt, welcome. Thank you, Maurice. Uh, very good to have you with us today. Let, let's turn to the questions, if we may. Uh, first of all, we're, we're very pleased, in, in fact, that OFAC uh, recently confirmed that they'll be speaking at the summit. Uh, and it's been recently announced that the US is imposing secondary, secondary sanctions uh, to threaten foreign financial institutions that support Russia's military industrial base. What impact do you think this will have on non-US financial institutions in the UK and in Europe? Yeah, I mean, first of all, I think it's excellent news we're going to have OFAC uh, attend the conference. I think that will be um, hopefully a very insightful uh, session. So, I mean, I think it's worth noting with secondary sanctions, there's nothing particularly novel or new about them. Um, yeah. Most UK EU financial institutions uh, are very familiar with the parameters of both primary uh, US sanctions, as they're known, and secondary sanctions and will be and have been for many years cognizant of the risks of doing business in certain jurisdictions mm. and with certain entities and persons who um, then you know could trigger a risk of secondary sanctions so i mean this is a signal clearly of the widening uh, assertiveness of u.s sanctions but again nothing particularly novel about that that's been the environment for for many many years i i think as always the devil here will be in the detail because the target um, uh, for which the secondary sanctions are kind of there and designed to kind of hit, it's a fairly kind of broad base. So, you know, if it's military institutions versus general industrial institutions manufacturing, mm. the two, two very different categories. Uh, I don't think there'll be many EU, UK financial institutions supporting Russian military institutions at the moment. No. So. So in, in reality, so I think let's see the detail, uh, but I don't think it's going to send a shockwave for sure. I think it's a, it's a evolution, as we've seen with the Russian sanctions program mm. really since 2014 and is also, uh, as I say, a kind of continuation of the US willingness to threaten, if not impose secondary sanctions on the non-US players. Yeah, yeah indeed. So, so more of an evolution, as, as you say. I mean, look at it from the, the other way around in terms of uh, China, for instance. Uh, it has recently imposed sanctions against a US data intelligence uh, firm, Caron, effectively prohibiting them from operating in China. Uh, do you see this as part of a trend uh, against overseas companies? And what would you advise them to do in terms of their trading relationships in China, which is obviously quite, quite a difficult area nowadays? It is. I think I think the China dynamic is a really interesting one now because we're seeing lots of clients and this is both financial institutions, corporates, funds, whatever it may be, really across sectors, increasingly nervous about the, the geopolitics with China. They have looked at essentially now the Russia playbook when it comes to sanctions. Yeah. And I kind of posing the question, well, um, you know, from a US, EU, UK perspective, what happens if we see a sanctions program similar to that targeting China? But also mm -hmm. to your point, Morris, you know, we're also seeing a, a more assertive uh, Chinese administration when it comes to sanctions. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we've seen this in Russia where Russia have it, has its counter sanctions program, which is now making it very difficult for um, uh, Western companies to actually leave uh, Russia. Yeah. And, and and a greater assertiveness from China, as you've alluded to. So I think it's a very delicate uh, moment, I have to say. And for many clients, they are, it is causing pause for thought. Uh, and we are seeing clients coming to to us to, in essentially, to model what could it look like if suddenly they are the target of sanctions imposed by China, or vice versa. We see a more aggressive stance from the US and others yeah. in terms of the sanctions program uh, against against China. So um, I think, uh, as always, you know, be mindful, go in with your eyes open and do some contingency planning. Mm -hmm. uh, sanctions are notoriously difficult to predict, as we all know. 
but, yeah. but, but we're also clear there are certain sectors and certain activities which are more susceptible than than others and, and ultimately mm. again as we saw with iran as we see with russia yeah. they are trade based so they are designed incrementally to hit jurisdictions uh in the most economically painful areas not all at mm -hmm. once as we saw in russia but on an on a tactical incremental basis so i don't see any reason why china would take a different approach or any other country for that matter so i think do your contingency planning be mindful think about your structures think about your counterparty risk um and and plan accordingly but i mean certainly at, at this stage i don't think any reason not to be going into china if the yeah. commercial, uh, you know, considerations uh, drive you there. Yeah, indeed, you just uh, have to factor in the uncertainty, uh, I suppose, in making your decisions. Yeah. Uh, just before Christmas, the OFSI published its 2022-23 annual review, uh, which stated that they have recorded 473 suspected breaches of financial sanctions, uh, excluding uh, oil price cut and counter-terrorism uh, breaches, compared with 147 in the previous year. Is this a sign that the OFSI is becoming more effective in enforcing sanction breaches, or, or is it indeed something else? Yeah, so it's a really interesting uh, statistic, this. I, I think there's probably a number of factors in play. One is we are seeing um, OFSI and others taking a more assertive stance when it comes to enforcement. Yeah. So that is, that is definitely uh, playing out. I think also we are um, seeing the effect of uh, enhanced reporting obligations. Mm -hmm. So in the, in the Russia program in particular, there are more onerous and extensive reporting requirements. So, so operators uh, are having to disclose more information. Uh, and I think it's also a product of the extensive nature of the Russia program um, yeah. in, in particular. I mean, that, as we all know, is now uh, mm. probably the most extensive UK sanctions program in place, and uh, by by some distance, actually, I have to say now. And mm. so, in a sense, it's inevitable, particularly given the extensive levels of investment that were in place with Russia and, and Russian operators, um, that uh, you're going to get an in just a, a pure increase in the number of folk either accidentally tripping up or uh, worst, worst case, you know, circumvention and deliberate avoidance. So I think it's a useful reminder, actually, uh, to, uh, to operators that a um, uh, combination of all those factors still make this a very difficult environment to navigate. I mean, mm. I think it's fair to say, as we all experience, OFSI uh, is struggling as many public bodies are with resources uh, mm. and um, we see this particularly in the licensing space the, the time the time frames to get licenses yeah. so um, so you know they are battling that but I, but I think there are other drivers behind some of those numbers uh, mm. that uh, that are leading to an escalation in enforcement but the, but the make no mistake the signals are clear from OFSI and other enforcement agencies that this is an area of focus uh, particularly around circumvention and uh, and related activities. Hmm. I, very interesting. And and in terms of just just one final question, because we're we're running out of time. I, what further scope do you think uh, exists for further sanctions on, for instance, Russia? Uh, they've been tightened and tightened and tightened in various rounds. It, it, is there much uh, ground left to, to impose sanctions on? Yes, a very good question. Uh, I think the answer is yes, there is. Uh, I, I mean, it's been something of a game of sanctions poker in many senses. Mm. So, uh, uh, and the cards have been played. I mean, obviously, um, we're seeing a, the tightening set of restrictions around oil, uh, yeah. but not the outright ban. Um, obviously, you've got the oil, uh, oil uh, price cap regime, et cetera, and transportation, maritime transportation restrictions. So um, I, I, th I still think there are. I mean, I think there's there's numerous other asset freeze targets that are out there mm. uh, that will be on the list, the undisclosed list uh, held by UK mm. government, amongst others. Uh, yeah. There is there are still the tightening um, across certain sectors. We've seen very recently the uh, new sanctions targeting Russian diamonds coming on yeah. into yeah. Europe in particular. Uh, but that's also a kind of G7 initiative. Um, so. Uh, so, so, and there are also other sectors that are yet 
kind of untouched. So, so I think the answer is yes. Although, I mean, make no mistake, the major cards have been played, probably yeah. bar, for, yeah. bar you know, a outright ban on oil, which yes. would be a very significant uh, potential moment of self harm for Europe mm. in particular. So, so that I think will be. Um, some way down the line and, and things will have had to have deteriorated further on the ground to get to that point. Uh, absolutely fascinating. We, we could continue for much longer. Uh, sadly, we're, we're out of time. For, for the people uh, watching uh, this interview, uh, we'd very much like you to come in person and to attend the Economic Sanctions Summit in London on the 29th of January. Uh, more details available at the City and Financial website. Uh, so please do have a look there. Just remains for me to say, Matt, thank you very much for sharing those insights with us today. Pleasure. Thank you.